Now I've got a question for all my fly tying friends out there. Where do y'all go for inspiration when you're looking for a new pattern to tie? Now I assume a lot of you go to YouTube. I know I certainly do. I learn a lot by watching the masters out there, Barry Ord Clark and Mac and plenty of other great channels. I do read a lot of the blogs and the fly tying forums. And if you're a book nerd like me, you've got plenty of books to just randomly flip through. So I would love to hear in the comments where all y'all go for fly tying inspiration. Now today's pattern, I did find it by flipping through an old issue of Fly Tire Magazine. There was an article from the summer of 2017 called The Fatheads, A Tale of Two Terrestrials. It was by Dennis Potter who runs Riverhouse Fly Company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And the pattern is his fathead beetle. And it called my attention for a couple reasons. First, well, it's almost terrestrial season. And then it's a pretty easy pattern to tie and it's just really cool looking. Now it is a fairly typical foam body beetle, but it does have two unique traits. First, it's got wings tied out of EP fibers, fairly short and sparse, and then it's got a fat head. So obviously that's how it got its name, but it is a fun little pattern. And you know, this is not just a trout fly. This thing's gonna be equally effective in all kinds of water. So there's one in the vise, Dennis Potter's fat head beetle. Pretty simple pattern. That's what the fish is gonna see right there. Now the recipe does say 12 to 16. I'm going with a 14. This is a one extra long dry fly hook. Now the first one I tied was standard length and I think it was just a bit too short. So I think one extra long is the way to go. Black 70 denier thread. Let's put a base down around the bend. Now let's take it a little farther around the bend and then back up to where we're gonna catch in the, the foam body. This is a black three millimeter foam. I've cut a V on the end. That's pretty much just make it easier to catch in right here. So let's catch it in and go back around, you know, a little bit around the bend. Kinda of want a long body here. Now let's bury this and see what we've got. Is that gonna be long enough? Yeah, I think we're gonna be fine right there. A couple extra wraps. Now let's catch in the underbody, Peacock Girl. Now the recipe in the magazine says take eight or 10. I've been doing it with three or four and I think it's fine. You end up not seeing a whole lot of this in the end anyway. So let's break those off and then catch this in back here to where we're gonna start wrapping them. And Parker thread, pretty close to the eye, maybe an eye length back or so. And you might want to spin these together a little bit and just wrap them up. Now, I wouldn't worry at all about how they look up front. Most of that's going to be covered. The only part of this hurl you're going to see is really kind of in the back. So let's go ahead and fold this over, pull it kind of tight. Do a little pinch right here and then several wraps, you know, maybe eight or 10 wraps. No, not too tight necessarily, but enough and tight enough that hopefully it won't spin on you. And what I usually do, I'll put a couple under, a couple over, back under, over, and now a few tight wraps. Just hopefully that'll keep it from spinning. Now the next step, and this is how it gets a fat head name, is fold this over and then push it up, create a little fat head. Now be mindful right here, if you go too far up, you might, you know, I got a little bad piece of foam right there, but if you go too far above your eye, it'll be a little harder to put your tippet through. It won't be impossible, you might just have to push it up when you're on the river, but you know, keep that in mind. We are creating a fat head here, but we don't want it to go too far above that eye. And I think that's gonna be fine. I'll be able to get my tippet through that right there. But here's something you wanna do. Several wraps, create a little flat space right here if you can, because so we've got three more components that we're tying in right here between the head and the, the body. Now that head's pretty big, but you know, that's okay. It is a fat head beetle. I'm gonna pull this pretty tight and then snip it off. Now we've got that little piece right there and I'm gonna just use that to help fatten out my area in between them right here. Okay, so there we go. We got our body and a big fat head. Now the next thing, it's the wings. 
and some EP fibers or the equivalent, nylon, Z-Lon, Raylon, whatever you want. And Dennis in the article said, tie them in one at a time. And the first one I did, I did tie them in one at a time, but I think you can save some time just by, you know, using one piece right here and making them both out of the same one. We are gonna trim them pretty short here in just a second. So there we go, we got them coming off the side. I'll go ahead and trim that one just to get it out of the way, but they're gonna be shorter than that before we're done. And the next thing, just some black rubber for the legs. I've got one piece, I'm folding it over right here. And I'm just gonna try and lay it on either side right here. Pull some extra thread out and do some loose wraps. This is kind of a, a trick that'll help you anytime you're doing rubber legs. So I've only gotten, you know, maybe three pretty loose wraps right there. Take a look at them. Make sure they're coming off how you want. Pull a little bit more thread out. Now I can put a good seven, eight, nine wraps right here. Pretty loose. And then I can go in with tighter wraps and it's not gonna cause these legs to spin around. And now we'll wanna trim them to size. So this back one, or maybe not to size, we're just trimming them to, you know, they'll be a little bit shorter than that before we're done, but that makes it a little easier to work with. So really only one more component, just the indicator, a one inch strip of egg yarn in a white, yellow, pink, chartreuse, orange. This is a fluorescent orange right here. And you know, one inch is gonna be plenty. We're gonna trim it short here in just a second. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Now, one of them I did, I tried to put a couple of wraps just around that. I don't think it was necessary. It's not going anywhere after you've got, you know, several wraps right there. So what I've been doing, I've just been going straight to the whip finish right there behind the eye. And now we can trim it all up and clean it up if we need. This piece, just pull this egg yarn kind of tight, cut it not terribly short, but it doesn't take as much as you'd think to make this fly visible. So let's just jostle these legs right here and these wings. You know, beetles don't have real long legs, but they're not insignificant. And certainly in this pattern, they're not. So I'm gonna trim that and then I'm gonna make these, you know, wings say, just a little bit shorter than the legs right there, I think. And there we go. The fish's view right there, pretty buggy fly. Maybe if you want to put some head cement on it, I'd just put a drop of super glue or head cement right under that eye and let it wick down over those thread wraps. But a pretty simple summer terrestrial beetle pattern. I think it's going to do well for me. Now, I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.